Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship on this Sunday. This is the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Why don't we start, uh, find somebody near you in your pews that you did not come to church with and just tell them I'm glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here today. On behalf of our church, I want to thank St. Paul Senior Choir for being with us here. You all probably can't see him. A lot of you can. They're right over there. But thank you for providing some awesome music for us today. And for our two youth singers, thank you guys too. And I will uh, remind everybody that kids who lead worship lead best when people smile at them in the pews. So I invite you to consider that as they lead us in worship today. Um, some other announcements. We are blessed to have our, our, our council president, Alex Dickey, offer our message today. So thank you, Alex, for doing that. Please pray for Alex as he prepares today to give the message. Uh, due to the fullness, there's a lot of moving parts today. We're celebrating New Members Sunday. So if you're new members, thank you also for being here. After the service, we have a reception. I invite people to stick around and enjoy fellowship together with our new members. Because of the fullness of the service, we will not have communion around the rail today. We will pick that up again in October. Uh, please look at your announcements for other things. There's a St. Luke's Then and Now board coming. And Susie Mattis is inviting folks who have pictures or special items from St. Luke's or a memory to, to give them to her. You can find out how to do that in your bulletin. Uh, food shelf donations we're looking for next Sunday. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, and so we like folks to bring food shelf donations on that Sunday. Healthcare kit donations are once again also being, being brought in by the, the Christian care team. All the donation boxes are in a little donation nook in the alley entranceway. So you won't find the boxes in front, you'll find the boxes in the alley entranceway in one stop where you can put all of your boxes. Uh, Brad Russian has our Stewardship Committee third quarter update. So I'll invite Brad up right now. Thank you, Brad. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So as promised, to keep the congregation informed on the current budget, our goal at this point of the year was to be at $145,488. And our current income as of the end of the third quarter, which is the end of August, um, was $134,689. So we we're a little short, but uh, we still have plenty of time in the year to catch up and uh, keep it short and sweet. That being said, on behalf of the Stewardship Committee and the Council, I'd like to thank everyone for your generous giving, and let's finish out the year strong. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Let's gather ourselves for a moment of prayer as you ready your hearts and minds for worship. The Lord be with you. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the, the many ways you prepare us to hear you speak. We thank you for music that opens our hearts, for prayer that accesses different parts of our brain beyond the analytical. We thank you for different voices, Lord, who speak about how you're moving in their lives and the lives of people that they know, guide us today to be both challenged and blessed and give us something that we can use to reach out to those that we meet on Monday. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Amen. Invite the congregation to please stand. Today, the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Confess our sins together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy, Come to our aid. When we hide brokenness and only show you wholeness, forgive us. When we cover shame and guilt with pride and pretense, forgive us. When we point out the speck in our neighbor's eye but ignore the log in our own eye, forgive us. When we choose old harmful ways of living over new life-giving ways, forgive us. Transform us by the power of your Spirit, Lord God, and make us new. Children of God, God loved us even when we were dead in sin, and he makes us new through Jesus Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Live as people who are set free. Amen. You may be seated.
gather together in prayer. Let us pray. O generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and all we do is empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Alex, welcome you up for readings. Thank you, sir. All right, the first reading is Galatians 6, 9 through 10. Let us not become wary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Second reading is 2 Corinthians 4, 16. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. This is the word of our Lord. Kids, you're preaching the children's sermon today with song. We'll have fun. So he was there, and um, he told me his, his dad's family were bad people. And I said, I'm sorry, you know, start thinking about all the stuff when you have kids, what bad people means. And he looked me in the eye with those dark, dark, dark brown eyes, and he said, no, they were really bad people. And at that point, I knew I had no idea what they were talking about, what he was talking about. He said they were murderers. That was their job in Honduras. And I was like, oh, but I didn't want to make him feel too bad. So I just said, I see. And I said, so what did you do? <clears throat> and they said, well, I knew I had to get out of there. And he said, there's a group of 40 people walking through the village that they lived in, and they were heading north to the U.S. So he's like, I just jumped in with them. And I said, well, how do you know how to get 
he's like, there's trails, and like the people just kind of know if you follow the right path, you can find out. Anyways, he got to the Mexican border, and uh, their immigration people there got him, sent him back to Honduras. He said, I, I was there for one night, and I left by myself. All right, you can head back. So he walked, and he got up to the Mexican border, moved his way over a different trail, and walked through the desert by himself, that size kid, for three days and three nights. And I said, how in God's name did you make that? And he said, I had a gallon of water, one can of pineapple, one can of be beans, and a bag of tortillas. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I just kept walking, and I, I made it to a town. And then I, he hopscotched from town to town to town, living in cardboard boxes and on the street, begging for money and food, just trying to slowly make his way up. He ended up getting to the Rio Grande. He called it the Big River. I'm like, yep. Yeah. He crossed there, got into Texas, made his way up, and he found a bricklayer that would employ him for $100 a week carrying bricks. Um, so he was there for a little while, and then he knew he had an uncle in Alexandria. So at this point, actually, something broke when we were doing stuff, so everything stopped, and our conversation skipped about that part till from Texas to Minnesota. But Anyways, he got up there, and with his $100, he ended up buying a PlayStation because even though he had been making an adult decision, he just was still a 12-year-old kid at this point. And he was walking, and he found his uncle somehow, and then he convinced the lady to say that she was his mom so he could go to school so he could learn English because he didn't know any English. So he was able to enroll in school, lived with his uncle for a while, and uh, saw these kids playing soccer. He's like, I kind of like sports, but it was more that I could immerse myself with other people in out of school context to learn English. And it was $100 or about to join for the athletic fee and the uniforms and stuff. So he sold his PlayStation and did that. So then for the seventh and third, or like 12 to 13 years old, seventh grade, he ended up living in a laundromat every night. And that's where he slept. And I said, Why did you choose a laundromat? And he said, It's so cold up here. The wires keep, or the dryers keep you warm at night. Like, well, that makes a lot of sense, actually. So his friends would ask him and say, where, where do you live? Because they always want to come over. He had three really good friends. And he would lie because he was embarrassed to say that he was homeless and had nothing. Eventually, he told them. And then these three families actually came together. And he would stay at person's, person's, person's house until one day the one family stopped and said, we'd like to adopt you. And of course, he was totally thrilled. So he said, yes. He tells me, like when he talks about his mom, dad, and brother and sister, that's who he's talking about. And you'll see Ezra sitting in the ditch sometimes when we got a break and he's on the phone because he talks to his mom every single day. And uh, just, it's pretty cool that part. Anyways, at this point, I'm like, did not expect this for the day, so I went through a range of emotions of anger, sadness, confusion, joy for this guy. And I finally said, you're, you're a very tough dude. Um, and I kind of don't even know what to say. And he just said, I knew how to change my situation. So that was that kind of that. And then, so what does this reading have to do with this? Or what do I, these readings have to do with this? Think of this person's day-to-day -day life. At eight years old, he had stability, structure. All that went to chaos when he was shipped away. And then when he hit 13, he, uh, he got stability again because he never gave up. And that's why we never give up. And the people that showed him a loving home after a long, weary field journey, like the scripture said, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. You know, his family, his mother, how do you think she feels every day knowing she saved his life, basically? And being able to see him succeed, have a gainful career, have a family, have a place to stay, and fulfill all the things that he could have, and even more. So what does that mean for us? Uh, I'm not sure. A, because I'm not qualified enough to tell you what it means. Instead, I think it's something for all of us just to look back and pick out your point of the story and see what speaks to your soul at that point. But I can tell you what it means for me. Life is hard at varying degrees on a vertical scale for different people. But if we place ourselves on a horizontal plane where no matter what level of loss and grief it is to that person, we accept how much it affects them, not if we think it's bad or good. I think it can help us grow, not, I think it can help us 
not grow weary from doing good and avoid saying, like, it isn't that bad. But instead start saying, I'm here for you with the Lord. As I or he may not be able to fix your problems, but you will not be alone through Christ, like Ezra walking through the desert. Instead, someone is always with you and supporting you, sometimes, even if you don't see it. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Let's all gather together for a moment of prayer. Lord be with you. Lord, we thank you for stories of perseverance, um, stories of strength, stories of people finding home when there is no home. If, if we're the person here today who needs to find home, whether that be something physical or spiritual, guide us. Give us those that we can tell our story to along the way. If we are those here today that are able to help somebody make a home, give us the means, opportunities, and strength to be your hands working for that purpose. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. The offering plates may go around as St. Paul's Choir offers their gift. Thank you all.
Thank you all for that, that gift of music. As a shameless plug, the choir practices every Sunday right after church. At this time, we have the absolute pleasure to welcome and pray for our new members joining St. Luke's this year. I'm going to speak your names. As I speak your na names, you're welcome to come up to the front. And I ask for forgiveness ahead of time if I butcher any names. Okay. We welcome today Brittany and Brett Dankers, Gerald Meyer, Jill Rambolt, Haley Rambolt, and Colton Hall, Robbie, Jackie, Drew, and Jorley Ebner, Ron and Janice Horseman, Philip, Brittany, Jalen, Zara, and Koa Zorn, Luke, Courtney, Madeline, Patrick, and Grant Meyer, Kevin, Robin, Shelby, Haley, and Jason Dankers. And you guys can come, sorry. Directions. You guys have come, just line up right here by the steps all the way in. I know it feels super weird to be in front of folks at church. This is the last time. We'll make you do it until I ask one of you to preach like Alex just did. <laughs> and Dan, Chelsea, Allison, Leah, and Paige Lubhan. And that's the name I hope I got right. Okay. We'd also like to ask Pastor Eric and Christy and Aaliyah and Caleb to come up also. We are new members, aren't we? I'm going to stay right here, though. <laughs> Welcome. Glad to have you all joining our church. Everybody say hi, new members. Hi, new members. Everybody say we love you. We love you. Not bad. I invite um, our, our, we all have speaking parts. I invite you all to look at the bulletins. I should have had you all bring your bulletins up with you. I didn't do that. Your only speaking part is the creed and some other things I'll kind of guide you through. Don't feel bad if you don't have the creed memorized. That's totally okay. Thank you. Yeah, and if you have bulletins, you can share them too. Dear friends, we give you thanks for the gift of baptism and for our new members, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome into the life and ministry of this congregation. I invite the whole church to stand. Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, meaning of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. In our baptisms, we are welcomed into the body of Christ, and we are sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and through deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, please respond with, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Thank you. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for our new members in their life in Christ? If so, please respond enthusiastically with we do and we ask God to help and guide us. We do and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us welcome our new partners in God's mission at St. Luke Lutheran Church. Everybody together, we rejoice with you in the life of baptism 
Together, we will serve God, our neighbors, and each other in Christian love. Amen. Our outreach team has some gifts for you to take home. And she is right behind. There you go. And, and kids, you guys can, can fight your parents for who gets the first glass of water, orange juice, or coffee out of this mug. Thank you. You guys are welcome to St. Luke's Lutheran Church. This is awesome. We are so thrilled to have you. Let's welcome them. All right, y'all may be seated. Our service will continue with our prayers. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church and its ministry, bless the newly baptized, and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for natural wonders of your creation, restore damaged forests, Upon the table, and we thank, of course, those who, who offer online. Let us join together in thanking God for his gifts. We are together with the offering prayer on the top of that second page. With one voice, God of abundance, who caused streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens, accept the gifts you have first given us, unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly, in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Remember again together today that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Christ took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together boldly as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. The, Holy, the communion table is open to all, so we invite all to come up. If you are new to St. Luke Lutheran Church, go after someone who's been here before is gone. But if you are the first, you will grab a little wafer and then you'll dip it into one of the cups by way of intention. I invite the ushers to please come help serve. We will begin with these two rows. Thank you. Thank you. 
today may this body and blood of our, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you all and keep you in his grace. Amen. We pray together our communion prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand for a blessing. On this day and into your week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is Go in Peace. Amen. Friends, there's sugar and caffeine downstairs for our new members' reception. We welcome you all to go down and enjoy those things as well as this fellowship they are meant to create in us.